Hey everybody, today Rado talks through Deckscape The Fate of London, which is the second game in the Pocket Escape Room series. And I'm going to be spending a few minutes today giving you an idea of what you get in this box, which is tricky because of course, an escape room experience is basically solving a series of puzzles that all come together to, you know, basically uh, create a uh, storyline that you're trying to work your way through, a mystery you're trying to you know, get to the bottom of, whatever it might be. I don't want to spoil any of the story elements here. I don't want to spoil any of the puzzles because that's the whole point of this game and there wouldn't be much reason to get it if I you know, gave you all the answers ahead of time. But what I am going to do is I'm going to give you a sneak peek. I'm going to give you a taste by walking you through the first 60 seconds of this game. I'm just going to show you the first few cards. It'll give you an idea of what the overall experience is without actually spoiling the overall experience. That's the best way I can give you a feel for this game. Now, I've already done this same process with the first game, Test Time. And if you want to check that out, you can hit the I in the top right corner of the screen and go watch that because this I'm going to show you even less than here. If you have watched the video for this, you have an idea of how the basic systems work. Here I'm just going to show you just a little bit of new changes and whatnot, but again, there's not going to be any spoilers. So, for starters, I'm not going to spoil the story, but if you want to, you could read the back of the box. This is what you'd know if you read about it in the store or online. But if you don't want to read that, don't pause, don't read it. Let's just keep going. Uh, um, the, like the previous Deckscape, it is a deck of 60 cards, I think. Uh, I think it's 60 cards. Uh, you can't see what's on the back, you can't see what's on the front. You open the box, you crack the shrink, and then it warns you, hey, um, you, know, uh, you know, get ready to play. And basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be flipping through a series of cards to get all the way through all of these um, tasks and challenges and puzzles that we have to figure out. And again, I'm not really going to be reading the particulars. If you want, you can pause. And it, this walks you through the instructions of how to play the game. And also, it gives you the introduction to the story, you know, the characters and stuff like that. So, I'm just going to tell you just the basics, but if you want to know more, pause and read for yourself. But anyway, so as it says, uh, remove the deck, flip this card, and it says, hey, welcome. And this starts giving you the basic instruction manual for how you play the game. So, if you want to read that, you can. And then here's the second page. And now, hey, here's this fine fellow. He says hello. He introduces you to send you on a top secret mission. If you want to, read that. And uh, now there's a little bit more about the particulars of how you play. And here's a bit of backstory for why we find ourselves in the pickle that we're in. And now, this is the first puzzle. Although not really. Like test time, the game gives you a tutorial. There's no timer yet going. You're not racing against the clock. This just gives us a very, very simple puzzle to solve because this is introducing us to how the system works. What you're supposed to do is, you know, read this down here. Now again, don't. If you, if you just kind of look cross-eyed or look away from the screen, you don't have to have this spoiled. But again, there's nothing to spoil here. This is a super duper simple puzzle that it's not about the puzzle. It's about learning how to play the game because what happens is once you figure out this puzzle. Once you do what it says down here, um, you basically decide, right, here's what I would do. I answer the question that it asks. You can see it's even in bold right there. What, and you'll, so go ahead and look at this if you want. If you think you know the answer, um, you know, pause if you don't. And if you, when you do, go on ahead and unpause and I'm going to flip the card. Okay, here we're going to flip the card. Boom. This is the answer. Now the question is, did you get it right or did you get it wrong? If you got it right, hey, congratulations. Keep on going deeper into the deck and find more, um, you know, increasingly uh, more challenging puzzles to solve. Because again, this is a simple tutorial. If you got it wrong, no hard feelings. Just mark down an X. Because the, the more X's you get, the worse your score is going to be. If you want a perfect score, you want to always answer every question correctly. And you want to do it in an hour's time to get the perfect score. Now, I should, I'll should i tell you right up front, Jen and I did not get a perfect score. We got kind of a medium score because we didn't quite finish it. We finished it about an hour 10, if I recall correctly. And we had a few X's here and there. Um, because uh, don't be fooled. This is crazy simple, but the questions can get pretty tricky. Pretty tr tricky to solve. But anyway, either way, whether you got it right or wrong, you then move on to the next card, which is a brilliant, brilliant thing. This game doesn't, um, you know, 
halts you in your tracks. If you just can't figure it out, you can say, well, I guess this is the answer. You flip it. If you got it wrong, no big deal. If you got it right, hooray. Either way, the card always tells you, in case you got it wrong, and you, well, I could, how could we even figure that out? It tells you, here's how you should have figured it out, which as you can see, it's explaining it right there. But anyway, after that, we keep on going deeper, and um, this is introducing us to the concept of our score sheet. When you're ready to start playing, and now here's the deal. It's at this point that we're about to get into a little bit of true spoilers. Again, I'm not doing anything that you wouldn't see in the first minute, but what I'm, I'm about to show you the next card, which is kind of spoilery. And what you're supposed to do is, when you get to this card, you're supposed to take a pen and write down what time it is. Because you don't even need a stopwatch for this game. You can just, as long as there's a clock or a watch somewhere, you write down when you start, you write down when you finish. Every time you guess incorrectly, you put an X here. This is your score sheet. At the end of the game, it'll tell you how long did it take, how many X's, here's your final score, and it'll give you a rating and all that. So, um, it's after this point that the timer starts. And so, real puzzles are going to show up. Now, I'm going to show you just the first one, because I want to give you an idea of what a real puzzle is like, because this was not a real puzzle. Um, just to give you, a, you know, a sense for what, what's coming up. You've already seen the story. You're about to see the first puzzle. But if you don't want to see that, hit that eye to go to Final Thoughts right now, or to go check out the run-through for test time if you want. Um, otherwise, um, I, if you want to play this for real, Here's the deal. I would suggest truly start a timer right now or write down what time it is so that when you eventually do pick up Deckscape for yourself, um, however much time you spend, you know, the, the minute or two you spend trying to figure out the first puzzle I'm about to show you, you will um, be able to apply that to the time you spent on everything else. Because, of course, once you solve this puzzle, if you ever pick up Fate of London, you'll be able to skip past that puzzle really quickly. Right, so are you prepared to time yourself? Or have you left? Either way, here we go in five, four, three, two, one. All righty. So, um, you know, oh yeah, this is, I already flipped that. Hey, what's this? Read it at your own. I'm not going to say, but this is a very common conceit. A lot of times in the Deckscape games, you'll find a card, it just says, you found an item. And yes, I did. And so you flip it over, and now you keep this. Uh, this was true in test time as well. You just keep this item because you might have to reference it for um, later times as you go deeper in the deck. So we keep this off to the side because that's an item that might help us out. But wait, we're not done. We have found a peculiar picture. All righty. And so again, it says how you found it. It says flip it and then keep this because it may be useful. And well, there you go. That might be useful. And, um, and then what's this? Well, um, we don't know what it is. All righty. We'll keep that aside. And now, like the previous game before it, you've got these two clue cards. These will basically, if you ever get stuck on a, on a card, you can look at these. And like, say you were stuck on card 15. If you read this text backwards and it says, uh, do not use a mirror, read the text backwards, it'll give you a clue to help you figure out. It won't solve card 15 or card 49 or card 42 or whatever. It'll just give you a little bit of a clue to help you out. So you keep these off to the side in case you need them. And here's where I'm going to stop, folks. This is the first true puzzle. Um, figure it out if you can, because um, the games, this is as far as you get until we move on to the next thing. So here's the text of what it says to do. I think you can see that pretty clearly. So right now, all we've got is, let me zoom out a little bit, we've got these three cards and this puzzle, the secret location that we have to find. All right, there's nothing on the other side of this, there's nothing on the other side of this. This is a two-sided card, so you've got this and this. Maybe this is useful, maybe it isn't. You should be trying to solve this puzzle right now, and go ahead and try it, folks, after, um, uh, because this is where I get off. I don't want to show you what comes after here. I'm just showing you this one puzzle, because it's a good little puzzle. If you solve it, that's great. Um, you can get the game and find out if you got it right or not. And, you know, if you watched my deckscape video, you know what's interesting here is this isn't giving you four different decks of cards. You've just got this one thing you've got to solve. Now, don't worry. The system that was introduced 
in test time. After we get past this, a few more cards, we will divide into four different decks, and you'll be searching through the different decks, working on them. The progress you make in one applies to another one, etc., etc. So all that stuff is still going to work the same, but otherwise, folks, that's it. I'm not going to give you the answer. If you um, want, keep on trying to figure this puzzle out, and um, heck, if you want, you can ask me, and I'll, I'll tell you if you got it right or not. But either way, it's now time to go to final thoughts in five, four, three, two.